All right. Good morning. Well, good morning for me because I'm still on the West Coast and uh, at least for a couple more days, we're on Pacific time over here in Arizona. Uh, I'm <clears throat> last week I uh, was on vacation with my wife. We were on our anniversary trip. So those of you who are used to coming on Tuesdays, my apologies that uh, we I wasn't around. Um, we had a good time at the beach and it was a good, uh, good break, good rest away. Um, a lot of people don't realize how much weight um, this work carries, you know, and, um, you know, you guys are all going through it. I've been through it. I understand it. I feel like in some ways I've been going through it for six plus years myself as we've been doing Empowered Man. Um, but uh, we're, we're following the series uh, of fear this month. Um, the last several weeks, we've been talking about different fears. Uh, this is October and uh, it's fear month. You know, we our culture, our society likes to be afraid. We like to fear monger. Um, I think my theory is on that is that it's because we want to feel something. You know, fear makes us feel alive. Um, you ever done something that's like scary, right? Uh, you know, last, I think it was over the summer, I was in California and I was trying to do some body surfing with a boogie board. I don't know if the kids call it these days. And I remember just like hitting a wave and getting taken under. And oh my gosh, I've got to put in that spin cycle. And if you've ever been put in that under like a really, really harsh wave, you almost feel like you're not going to come up for air at all. And it's like you keep trying to come up, but the current is pushing back on you. And you have to just you have to just like literally relax and and you get up from that. And it's like, man, what an adrenaline rush, right? That, that fear. And that's what we do when we're going through these situations, because, you know, if you're going through a separation divorce, it's so easy to create fear in our mind of the situation. You know, we, we started out in the month, you know, the fear of of. Um, oh, my gosh, I forgot which fear we talked about in the beginning of the month. But um, but today we're starting about the, the fear of starting over. Actually, here, I'm going to get my, uh, my thing up so I don't forget what we started off with in the fears. We started off in the fear of being alone. That's right. So if you didn't watch that one, go back to watch the fear of being alone. We talked about um, how to encounter that fear of being alone. And then we talked about the fear of missing out. Um, and now we're talking about the fear of starting over. And the fear of starting over really... If you think about anything that you've done where you've been successful at it and you have to start over, it sucks. Uh, I've got a client who was doing the, um, it's called the 75 hard challenge from Ed Milet or something. And he was, he was doing the challenge. He was like 50 days into the challenge and he messed up on one of those days and had to start over. And it was like, damn, dude, that sucks. And so he gets in it and he starts doing it about 35 days in again, he messes up, doesn't do one of the things he's supposed to do, whether it's a picture or whatever, and has to start over again. And, and, and it's that, that feeling of frustration of like, man, I thought I had come so far. In fact, I had come so far, how could I have to start over now? And that's what many of you are thinking in your relationships. You're, you're, you're thinking about, how could I start over now? Like I've been married for X amount of years. I was married for 17 years, had four kids, and then had to start over. 40 years old, four kids. What woman wants to be with this guy? You know, a uh, 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 overweight, short guy with four kids and, you know, baggage from an ex-wife who's got mental illness, et cetera, et cetera. Like, who wants this? And what I found in this process is that we have to really get good at encountering these fears. And, and what I mean by that is that is that we don't just we, we don't just let the fear overcome us. We have to take this fear head on and we have to. Um, spill truth to it. So what I want you guys to be thinking about right now is like, what is my biggest fear of starting over? What is the what is the number one thing I'm afraid of when it comes to starting over? And maybe you're maybe you're not in a position where divorce is imminent and it's not going to necessarily happen, or you don't know. But I want you to go there for a second. I want you to really think about what is your greatest fear about starting over. And I want to open it up to the floor um, today. I want to do a little bit more coaching than I normally do. And you can either raise your hand with a little uh, thing here that's a little, you can little, little put your, your hand up or whatever um, so I can see you. But what is the thing that you are most afraid of when it comes to starting over? So go ahead and get your hands raised and I'll, I'll start calling on some of you guys. And uh, let's do a little bit of coaching around this. I know somebody's got a fear here. I understand if you're driving, that's fine too. You can. You can finger up if I can see you. I can't. Uh, I see Eric's putting his finger up. All right, brother, go for it. Let me unmute you. Let 
it's not it. There we go. All right. Well, for me, it was was a fear that I'd be starting over, and I came to the realization over the last four months that no matter what I do, if I stay, if my wife and I stay together, or we go our separate ways, um, I'm cha I've changed so much in the last four months that there is no flat. The previous me is gone. So I don't have the choice whether I'm going to, anything's gonna change or not, I have changed. Uh, it took scaring the life out of me, but it worked. Yeah. What was the biggest fear for you though when you were encountering this situation? The biggest thing for me was that I was going to be alone and dying. Yeah. Literally dying because I, I had a yeah, uh, I had a five year given five years of life left, and that was that was a, one of the many wake up calls I got. Okay, and did that change? <laughs> it's changed everything. I used to watch TV all the time when I was sitting at home. I barely paid attention to my kids, to my wife. I did the dishes once every few days and did the minimum that I needed to do to stay alive. And since then, I watched maybe an hour of TV in the last four months. Um, taking my kids out everywhere they want to go when I've got them. And even my wife has gotten to the point where uh, two weeks ago now, we were at a our neighbor's birthday party. And she was like, yep, when I was moving my clothes out of the house, I was 99.9% .9 sure that we were done. Hmm. And she's like, now, I don't think, I'm not sure we're done. And now it's actually gotten to the point where every day, we're getting together with the kids. Um, we're talking every morning. We're talking on my when I get done with work, which is always what I did. And then we always almost always talk before we go to bed. So our communication has gone through the roof. And even when she gives me openings that she might be open to a little bit more, she's like, slow down. And we've got something good going on here right now. Just give me time. Yeah. So she's actually giving me good direction on where I'm allowed to to do and what I'm allowed to do. Got it. So it sounds like you you made some changes and and that's helped you in terms of like facing a lot of the stuff you were facing. Um, let's just say, for example, that you know for whatever reason that it doesn't work out and she ultimately still you know ends up divorced. What would be your fear of starting over then? This way, I'm not even scared of it now. Okay. I did it. I, this is now my second marriage. Um, the first one, I actually ended up reconnecting with my ex-wife uh, a few about a month ago, and we had about a two-hour conversation about how our divorce went and everything that happened during our marriage. And we both realized that neither of us was ready for what was what we were doing and we were just overwhelmed with our own lives and we weren't ready to commit to each other and that's why that's ultimately why our marriage failed yeah awesome these are all good things man uh thank you for sharing i appreciate it uh yep. let's go to the next guy who's who's next he wants to share about your fears um and that's awesome that eric has, doesn't have that fear anymore but don't feel like you have to be that guy Right. So I want you guys to be open and honest and share, like, what is your biggest fear of starting over? Um, is it is it money related? Is it kids related? Is it relationship related? What What is that biggest fear you have of potentially having to start over? Let's go ahead and get some hands raised, fingers raised, whatever, or something so I can see you. Um, who's next? All right. I got Brian. Go for it, Brian. What's up, Mark? So. I'm going through some stuff. It looks like I might be getting a divorce. Um, so when it comes down to the biggest fears I've got, so I'm 42 years old. I've been with my wife for 13 years. Met her when she was 20. So 
I guess going out, man, I'm just kind of looking at the market here and I'm like, okay, I'm, it's almost seems like no matter what I'm going to do, I'm going to end up with another single mom. Um, I'm afraid of all the baggage that's going to come along with that. Like I, I've been telling my wife, I'm like, you know, we've, we've got so much together that we're just going to throw away. And it's almost like pure, you know, like our whole relationship's been so close and it's just been us for so long. And then now we're both going to get thrust out into this, this new market of like everybody with baggage, you know, and I guess that's what I'm afraid of. I mean, I've, I've been out a little bit and like women are just kind of all over me everywhere. Not really to say anything about that, but I mean, they're, they're around, but I'm like, you know, all of them I talk to, you look them up, they got like 14, 15 year olds. And I'm just like, you know, why did your marriage fail? Cause you didn't want to try or he didn't want to try or what? And I just, you know, that's what gets me is I'm like, if, if there's something wrong there, it's like, did you fix that yet? So that, that's what I've been looking at. Like, did you right. fix yourself? Was it you? Was it him? Um, you know, I'm just afraid we get out there and I just end up all alone too, you know, like, uh, like my dad, heck he's after he broke up with my mom, they, uh, he's almost been married two or three times and they're all like two years long. And now he just sits at home at night and drinks whiskey. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the big one. We you know we talked about a couple weeks ago was being alone. Um, a lot of guys fear that. I know I feared that too when when I was getting divorced, and you know the fear of being alone was a big deal. But in terms of starting over, it was it was also a big deal because you know you built X amount of trust, you built X amount of friendship, you built X amount of stuff within your current relationship, and now all that's gone. And so literally, you have to reestablish that trust reestablish that friendship, reestablish that romantic, the sexual side of things, all with a new person, and it can be scary. Um, here's the thing I would say is to, to most guys is that while it's scary, it can be the best thing ever for you. Um, you know, I thought a lot of the same thing. I remember when I was going out to the dating market, it was like a lot of single moms and, you know, it seemed like a lot of women that were financially not great and like, just looking for another paycheck or a you know child support check kind of deal and i'm like man i don't i don't want to do that and so i worked a lot on who i wanted to attract based on the emotional work i was doing and based on me becoming the most empowered version of myself and ended up attracting yes a single mom with three kids and i had four but who became an incredible partner and i have the best marriage. I've only been married twice, but this is definitely by far hands down three years into it. Uh, the best marriage I've ever had in my life. Um, my last marriage doesn't even come close to what I have now. Um, and I think that all comes back to who I was able to attract based on the person I was able to become. And it's not that you have to change who you are. It's more about healing who you've become, meaning because you've been in toxic cycles for X amount of years or time or whatever. And there's a lot of stuff that we don't really see when we're in that, we become very myopic in our relationship. And it's when we step back and start doing this emotional work, we start doing this work on our communication skills. We start looking at our boundaries. We start looking at what we've tolerated in our lives. And that shows us the type of person. I was the type of guy that basically allowed my wife, ex-wife to do a lot of things out of the fear of losing her and the fear that she would abandon me because I had such a deep needed fear for uh, a deep needed, um, uh, need for her to validate me and her to make me feel like I'm going to be okay and secure and all those things. And she cheated on me multiple times. And I would consist consistently take her back because of that, as opposed to just being strong enough to recognize I can let her go. And in doing so, that started to bring my power back. I started to say no. And then I ended up in this place of ownership where I was able to take ownership over the failures in my marriage, which then attracted my current wife. In fact, on my current wife's, like on our first date, she asked me, you know, what did you do to contribute to the failure of marriage? Even knowing what she knew. And then at the same time, I was able to ask her and we both, we had this like eight hour long date, literally discussing these types of topics. And so I would say to you that like a lot of it's just the story you're telling yourself that, that all the women are a certain way. I, I would say that when you're ready and you're able to attract the right kind of person, that person will show. Okay. Sweet, man. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Who else is next? So I want to talk about some of your fears of starting over. Maybe it's a, a financial thing. Maybe it's starting over with stepkids. Maybe it's uh, any other types of starting over. Who else has got one?
nobody else has any fears of starting over. I guess you guys are all shocked because I opened up the uh, the coaching portal here. Usually I don't do this. No one knows what to say. Well, I, I'll tell you what, if, if no one wants to talk about the fear of starting over, I'll open it up to the floor. If there's anything else that you guys would like to hear from me talking about communication, boundaries, uh, affairs, etc. Take a couple minutes and talk about that. If you guys have any other questions you want to shoot my way. Okay. If no one has anything else, I'll wrap up. I don't need to stay on for the full 30 minutes. Just seeing if there's anybody else that wants to share or ask me any questions about anything else specifically. Usually I go for about 30 minutes total, but uh, we can cut off early if you guys don't have anything else. Hey, Mark, how about the fear of um, repeating the same crazy mess that I got myself in? Like I have a tendency, I think, to. Um, be attracted to a, a type of woman that is never gonna meet my needs, and uh, like that. Uh, as as we're sort of sitting here talking, that's what I think was popping into my head: is I don't want to yeah. go through this shit again. Yeah. No, I mean that's a pretty common thing that we deal with with our clients. Um, I, I, to me, it has everything to do with you reshaping who you who you are meaning like healing who you've become because we attract literally into our lives what we tolerate um there's a leadership coach that taught me this a long time ago it's like what we promote what we tolerate is what we promote and so if i tolerate certain behavior if i if i tolerate certain communication patterns if i tolerate you posting shit on instagram that i don't agree with if i do those things i'm promoting to you this is okay if i if i tolerate you speaking to me a certain way i'm promoting to you this is okay and so our boundaries dictate who we attract into our lives. And so what you're talking about when you, when you say this about the type of woman, I very much understand this because all of my relationships up to my current, up to my current relationship, I mean, my current wife is nowhere near what all my relationships were, were like that, where I had women in my life that would run me over. I had women in my life that would basically um, bitch me out and, and I would be, you know, whatever I got to do to please you. And I was attracted to crazy. I was attracted to that because I wanted to save her. I was that savior type of guy. And so it took me doing the work that we do in our Thrive program, literally to expose that in me and to heal that part of me. And I remember saying on my date with Amy, my current wife, and saying, hey, I, I'm, I'm no longer a savior. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a recovering saviorholic. So if you're that type of woman, I'm not going to be around you. I don't want to <laughs> be with you. And, and she loved that because... What, what what Amy was, was a woman who was going through a divorce, who decided to take no child support, no alimony. She had her own job, own apartment, and and own car. And coming from where I came from with my ex-wife, who refused to work, who refused, you know, and like all those things, like this was night and day. And I was like, I respect this. And she's like, I don't need a man to save me. I want a man to add value to my life. And I'm like, boom, we just hit the jackpot here. I still don't know how I snagged her. Like literally, she's like a fucking 12 out of 10 um every way you know like but it but it really comes back to i think becoming that type of man and being aware of those types of things that's the work that you have to do to expose that lie in you because usually let's just be honest this comes from childhood wounds childhood trauma all that shit right and we don't have to be therapists to, to dig into all that stuff to find all those things out it's pretty common right a guy like you usually has a messy relationship with his mother or his father or something that causes this type of thing he feels like codependency where he had to like save his mom, save his dad, whatever it was. And so then he creates, recreates all that shit in his relationships. My dad was a fucking narcissist. Um, he, he had definitely some issues. And so because of that, I thought it was okay to be treated the way I was treated by my ex-wife. She would yell at me and scream at me and all those things. And when she left me, it reminded me when my dad died because my dad died when I was 15 years old. So like all of those things that you can unpack in therapy, I can tell you in two seconds of coaching, it's like, dude, we don't even need to go there. We can literally just move forward. And so that's that's the work that has to be done, in my opinion, for you to not keep making those same mistakes. So if it's something you're interested in, I'd love to you know chat with you about it. Um, shoot me a message or whatever. We can we can talk about what that looks like. I don't know if that answered your question or not. Did, did that help at all, at least? Yeah, 100%. 
that, that was probably have the same tendency that you did like father was a narcissist and so i end up with uh covert narcissistic women yep. people who have a lot of needs but aren't necessarily transparent about them and i figure out figure that out later yep i just posted the link to to our our page that just shares with our coaching is if you guys want to check it out it's right there thrivebrother.com uh, check that out. If that's something that's interesting to you, you can book a call with me from there. Um, who else has a question? Doesn't have to be fear. Um, could be, you know, could be anything else really. I'll, I'll open up the floor. Um, whether it's fear or if it's around communication boundaries, like what to, what you need to do in your current situation. Um, who else has got one? I saw Casey popped on. Casey, did you have a question? So you just kind of like popped in there. And you were like looking intently. No, no questions. Are you a stockbroker, man? You working? No, okay. You just you just look like you're like selling something right now. It's like I'm trying to I'm trying to do my job. Leave me alone. All right, cool. I'll leave you alone. Um, who else? I see John's camera just popped on. John, you got a question for me? Uh, yeah. If you're uh, if you're digging, I sure got one. <laughs> okay, let's go. For it. I got. I am I got driving, six so pardon me. All um, good. I know you can't give legal advice, but uh, I've been trying to nope. figure out six years after alienation how to uh, get along with my ex and co-parent and. Uh, this week, I have one pickup Halloween day at school with Thursday. I'd like five a week. I get one. She said she's just going to grab her and take her that day. And that's court order. How do you get along and just be okay with her taking her uh, Halloween against court order? How do I just uh, get along with her? So it's it's against. So she's taking your child against court order, correct? Correct. And in the state of Ohio, it would be a custodial interference. But that does me no good. I'm sure you're familiar with family court, but probably not be my best friend so how do yeah. i just say okay and get along but that's my boundary my boundary would be don't take my daughter because you i've got about 30 percent unfortunately for no reason should have 50 yeah and that takes me in the 20s that's the only day this week i'd see my daughter for a 10-day period yeah so how do i just get along with her is my question yeah you can't um <laughs> it's like i i think we have to we have to pull back and go what's the actual intention here is the intention to just please her and get along with her and be her bitch, or is your intention to actually fight for your daughter? I don't want to be a doormat, but I also don't want to end up in family court over uh, this Thursday. But she uh, she said, I'm letting you know I'm just going to go get her. If I did that, there would be Amber Alert in the state of Ohio. She did that. It's custodial interference, but again, I yeah. want to get along. My daughter's six. Yeah. So I think with and this is this is actually a great question. I think a lot of guys have this because there's a lot of confusion around boundaries versus control, right? And so think it's healthy for you to express your boundary and understand that she may not respect the boundary so for example in this situation what's happening is she's basically telling you i i'm going to get the kid um did you respond like no i don't want you to do that or i don't like that or that's against court order or anything like that correct uh, not so much court order yet i don't want to sound threatening i did say i'll trade you for wednesday i'll trade you for friday i'll do whatever you want I She's supposed to have her four to eight and I get to pick her up at school. But she said, no, I'm just going to go get her from school. I said, no, that's not OK. That's my only pickup day in the next 10 days. I, I look forward to that. And so does she. She said, no, too bad. Yeah. So she basically knows that she can do this to you and she's going to get away with it. Um, and so and I think that's probably just because of the way your relationship has been uh, up to this point where she's basically proven to her that, hey, you can do this and I'm going to be OK with it. So what, what I like to say in these situations is kind of like a, got it. So what I hear you saying is you, you're refusing to acknowledge that this is my time with my daughter and that you are going against my wishes right now and as well as the court order by picking her up. Is that, is that what I hear you saying? And, and getting her to reinforce and reinform, yes, that is what I'm, this is what I'm doing. Um, and by doing that, then you can say, okay. Um, this clearly is, is a violation of both my boundary and the court order, and this is not okay. And we will make sure that there's consequences for that. I mean, you can't, you can't have both. You, you can't, if you want to just take it in the ass, then take it in the ass. You know, I'm not trying to be crude with you, but like, you, you, you can't do both. You can't play nice and allow her to walk and, and, and then think you're going to be able to like manipulate her. Because I think that's where you've been in your in your whole process as you're just a, a 
you're a subtle manipulator with her because you figure out, okay, tit for tat, and then I can do this, and then she'll do that. And you kind of scratch each other's back, but she doesn't even want to do that anymore. Now she's like, well, fuck you. I'm going to do what I want. So far, it's been one-sided. Yes, like I said, I was alienated. Uh, we spent four or 500000 in family court, and they protected her. So every time she did something like this, but have I ever done anything like this? No. She's done that doesn't 100% matter. of the time. And, yeah. That, that, that doesn't matter. This isn't the court of righteousness here. Like, all, all we're talking about is you for your own power, right? So so you have to figure out for you what you want right now. And, and at least if anything, at least if anything, John, I would just say that you need to express that boundary. Like, Hey, this is not okay. If you pick her up, it's not okay. And just at least share that with her. You don't have to throw out the consequence. You don't have to say there's going to be a consequence. You don't have to threaten her with legal stuff, but, but just being very direct, it's not okay for you to pick up our daughter on Thursday or whatever day it is. I am going to be picking her up and be firm about it. And if she wants to fight you on it, if she's going to show up at the same time as you, it's kind of like a, like a firm presence, but I'm immovable in that. Um, what I liken it to is is the is some of the protesting that Martin Luther King did um, with his with his uh, with his followers, where they would sit and protest. They didn't fight anybody. They didn't they didn't do anything radically like wrong. They just were there. There was just like a presence, and that presence was enough to shake the nation and the culture and and all those different things. So I think for you, I think there can be a this is what's not okay for me. I'm going to go pick her up. And you go to pick her up. And if the wife takes her, then you don't fight her. You don't get into an argument with her. You don't do anything, but you do what you say you're going to do. Does that make sense? Correct. Yeah, I was asking even in legal terms, not to send her a message from our family wizard that said, this is the state of Ohio, uh, like I just said earlier. This is a custodial interference. And she'll say I'm bullying or manipulating her. Um, let's forget that you picked her up against court order. So while we say... I'm the innocent victim. Wait, I, I didn't understand that. So you mean that's what you've sent her in? No, not yet. But I was saying you're saying not to do that, not to be like, no. hey, you pick no. her up against court order and. No, you just go just like be powerful. Like I, I'm saying, don't even the courts. You be the court. You be the power. Okay. Like all you have to do is just show up. And if she disregards that. That gives you something to work with. Right now, you're going from stories you're creating in your head. You're, you're creating things that haven't happened yet. No, Thursday hasn't happened yet. So if you say to her, hey, look, it's not okay for you to do this. I will be there on Thursday to pick her up. With that kind of firmness, not, and okay. if you do this, and eh, 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 none, of that, none of that fucking cares. Like, basically, call her out. That's all you're doing. You're just saying, I'm going to pick her up Thursday. I hear what you're saying. But I'm gonna pick her up Thursday. It's my it's my day. I will be there, and that's that. You don't have to fight about it. You don't have to argue with her about it. Nothing. This is what it is. Okay. And if she Sounds shows good. up, for... she takes and she takes the kid. Now you have you have something to work with, and you can make okay. that decision. You want to go the court route? You go the court route. If you don't, you don't. But I think it'll it'll show her that you mean fucking business, because right now she doesn't she she thinks you're a piece of shit. She thinks you ain't gonna do shit. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Uh, I know this is kind of like a hodgepodge ended up being, but um, if, if you are interested in what we do in Thrive, I just uh, we have a new website here, thrivebrotherhood.com. You can check out all the ins and outs of what we do. It explains the content, explains all the ins and outs of the things we do. Uh, if you've ever thought about coaching, that's what it looks like. Um, if you want to know more, there's a little book, the link. You can book a link with me on there to say it's with me, nobody else, um, and we'll chat about what it looks like for you, the financial piece of it, all those different things. It's thrivebrotherhood.com. I recommend checking it out. Even if you aren't sure if it's something you can afford right now, let's at least, let's check about it. Let's figure out maybe it's a game plan for something down the road. Um, but it's definitely something that saves lives. And there's a billion testimonials in there, case studies, whatever, all in there. I, I leave I leave the whole thing out so that we can see it. All right, guys, have a good one. See ya.